Today is April 28, 2010, and I'm Lester Charlock. I'm here interviewing Sam Bernstein on behalf of the Oral History Project of the Stanford Jewish Historical Society, also known as the Jewish Historical Society of Lower Fairfield County. And uh, I've known Sam, we decided for 73 years, so we not uh, we're not strangers. <laughs> Sam, we were at your office at 123 Prospect Street, and uh, tell me about your parents. Where were, where were they uh, from, and uh, how did they meet, if you know? Well, yes, I do. Uh, my mother lived in, in Stanford. Her parents came to Stanford uh, probably in the... Uh, early 1900s and uh, my father came from the, the same town that they came from in Europe and when he came to Stanford uh, after the First World War he came to, to visit and he met my mother here and uh, the uh, wedding took place actually in Stanford and I brought along that uh, invitation which mm -hmm. I thought was interesting because the wedding took place in the old Stanford Hebrew Institute on Grey Rock Place in, in 1928. Mm -hmm. uh, you, let's back up a minute, Sam. Uh, you said they both came from the same town. Uh, where was that? Uh, <laughs> it was in the area known as the Book of Vina. Uh, mm -hmm. The Book of Vina has, a, has a, an interesting uh, history. My, when my mother came over with her father, she was about five years old. Uh, they came over on an Austrian passport. Mm -hmm. And when my father came over, he came over on a Romanian passport. They both came from the same time. Did that's they the know difference. each other? No, that's the difference between, he came, my, they, or 19, they came before the First World War. Mm -hmm. and before the First World War. And my father came here after the First World War. And that's the results of the First World War destroyed the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So what was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire became Romania at the end of the First World War. Later on it was taken over by, I understand, taken over by Russia at the end of the Second World War. And interestingly enough, they now annexed that particular area into what is now the Ukraine, and it's now part of the Ukraine. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit of history of Eastern Europe for you. You mentioned that they both came to Stanford. What, what brought them to Stanford? Well, my father came to Stanford because they, they were related. There was a family relationship, and he came to Stanford to visit. Uh, my grandfather, I think, came to Stanford, uh, and I was trying to figure that out. But I think that, uh, as far as I can go back, I think it was because the, the Gruber family was here originally. Uh, and my grandmother's half-sister was a, a Bela Gruber, who was the uh, mother of Joe Gruber and Sam Gruber. And I think when my grandfather came over here, he went to work for the, for the Gruber family. Mm -hmm. And that's how he wound up coming to Stanford. Now, the Manger family was also, also here. And I, I don't know whether they came before or after, but we, we had a lot of family here. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Manger family, they actually, they, uh, Mrs. Manger and her kids lived across the street, was on Hawthorne Street. Uh, that was a, uh, she was a sister to my uh, grandmother. And then there was the Sandhouse family with Morris Sandhouse who had the hardware store on Pacific Street, that was my grandmother's brother. So the, the whole family mm -hmm. seems to have wound, wound up here. And I don't know who came first, when, where, or how, quite frankly. Uh, so 
You went to school in Stanford? I went to school in Stanford. I went to the Elm Street School, uh, which is uh, sort of east of where the, where the General Insurance Building is, between the General Insurance Building and, and the uh, railway overpass uh, that's there. And uh, that was up to the sixth grade, and I have to say, there were only two Jewish kids in the school. There was Ernie Altwitz and myself. Uh, so we became good friends, yeah. and we still see each other, you know, to this day. Uh, we lived on Hawthorne Street, which is um, in the middle of Tresser Boulevard, about a third of the way between the Marriott Hotel and um, Elm Street. Uh, and it was, it was an interesting street. We had a, a real mix there. Uh, as I said, there was the Manger family across, across the street. Minnie Manger, Mainzer, was my grandmother's sister. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was the Glazer family. There was uh, parts of the Shannon family were, were there. Uh, the Uden family was, was there. They were the Jewish families, I think, at the top of my had, but it was, it was a very eclectic street. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, uh, our next door neighbors, we had a two family house there, and our next door people were uh, an Italian couple across the street. We had Hungarians, and we had uh, the Irish next door. It was, it was quite an eclectic street. Your parents were in Stanford, uh, and you weren't born in Stanford. Right. right. What happened is my father opened a business in, in New York. What, what kind of a business? grocery business. Mm -hmm. And uh, he opened it up, if you'll notice, if it's a very interesting year they got married, 1928. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how blessed I was, but uh, the uh, supermarkets came in and uh, he wound up going broke, mm -hmm. basically. And it was that period when we lived in New York that, as I said, they used to send me up here uh, for, uh, th this was my summer camp with my Aunt Rose who lived on Lincoln Avenue, which is where I, I, I met you. And after things went bad, uh, we moved back to Stanford. Uh, and um, the, the entire other family members apparently were in the liquor business and my father decided to, to try a hand in that. Uh, as you know, uh, Rose Angle, that was Angle's first shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and he wasn't about to become a furrier. So, uh, but Morris Brenner uh, was, in the liquor, was in the liquor business. Uh, Henry Lieberman, you know. So, they all wound up in the, in the, in the liquor business. So your dad had a liquor store he in Stanford? Yeah, a liquor store in the South End in Stanford, mm -hmm. yeah. What street was it on, do you remember? Woodland Avenue and South Pacific, mm -hmm. which is right near Ludlow Street. And, and then your other family members, I remember Lieberman was on the corner in Glenbrook on Hamilton Avenue. Hamilton Avenue, that's right. where he had his. And it's interesting, Mars Brenner, had his liquor store at that time uh, at Bull's Head, but on the long on the Long Ridge side where mm -hmm. Liberty Travel he was in that yeah. where that Liberty Travel is, and right next to him uh, was uh, Francis Brenner's sister Betty Bragan, and she had a um, uh, lingerie shop. No, 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 she didn't. She had like a, a candy store. Yeah. Later on, she moved to New Canaan, mm -hmm. but originally, when I, when I first remember her, they had the two stores next to each other mm -hmm. on, uh, uh, on Long Ridge Road, mm -hmm. side of Bull's Head. So, other family members that were here, uh, you tell us about your grandparents and their business, and your dad's business, and uh, now you talk about the Hex and the Liebermans and Ben Manger, they were all part of your mishpacha. Right. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, I, as a matter of fact, uh, I, I, uh, when uh, 
Marsha first got married, uh, she, she lived across the street on the top floor of uh, the house where her mother had her house. And uh, I remember when Joe Liebram was born and mm -hmm. we used to go visit across the street. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the two families were, were really quite close. Uh, you know, it, it's funny, I remember to this day, um, Passover. Uh, my family, they only had flesheks for Passover. You mm -hmm. couldn't have the other two hundred problem. And so, but Ben Manger was a very forceful guy. And uh, so when he came back, he managed, this was after he came back when he was in the army, he came back, he was able to talk his mother in to uh, having both Milichiks and Fleshes mm -hmm. Passover. And believe you me, I used to wander over there all the time when I couldn't stand eating any more <laughs> chicken. <laughs> I remember that to this day. <laughs> now you mentioned you have other cousins that uh, were active in the community here. Uh, so Max Spelke, Joe Zonia. Well, th no, they were not related. Oh. Max Spelke was not, not family. Uh -huh. and, and Zone was not family. I got to meet them uh, actually through their their sons. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I became very friendly in in, uh, in high school, though we didn't go to the same school, and I don't remember how we met. But uh, Max Spelke's son, we were very close. He was actually the best man at my wedding, mm -hmm. and uh, so and he was a partner at one time with Zone. The firm was Spelke and Zone, so uh, and that's how I wound up being going going to work initially with uh, for for with George Zone, and then the firm became Zone and Bernstein. And when he passed away, I just left the name there. Well, uh, we left off with the uh, Elm Street School. We're talking about your education. Okay, then I went to went to uh, Burke. That mm -hmm. was the, the next school. And uh, they had some more Jewish kids there. <laughs> we had a couple there. Uh, I remember one of my good friends was at Goldfarb. They had a lamp store. His family had a lamp store uh, on uh, uh, right on Atlantic Street, not far where the Chinese restaurant yeah, is. Yeah, it's called uh, Pickwick Gift Shop. Something like that. There was a lamp store. Yeah. Uh, then there was Erwin Fleischer was in my class. I think his father had a, a meat a meat market. There was uh, uh, Alan Wexler, whose father was in the uh, Alan Wexler Weissman. He was Weissman. I think it was Alan Weissman. Come to think of it, and his father I think was an insurance fellow. Mm -hmm. uh, And there were some others that I just, mm -hmm. just don't, don't quite recall. And then I went on to, from there I went on to Stanford High School. Uh, and I graduated from Stanford High School. During the years of, in, in, in uh, actually it's when I started to go to junior high school that I really started to go to the Jewish Center because the Hebrew school was there. And how I hated that. But I used to, Actually, even when I was in Elm Street School, I was going to the Jewish Center, to the Hebrew School, mm -hmm. and eventually I got into the you know the junior program and all those kinds of things there. It uh, really was the focal center in, in Stanford. Yeah, well, especially being right down the street from the high school, we all went down the hill after school, and that's right. That was the place to come. That's to. right. But I used to, yeah. that, but I found particularly difficult when I had to walk from. Uh, the Elm Street School up to the Jewish Center. That, that was a schlep. Where were you living at that time? Still on Hawthorne Street? On Hawthorne Street, yeah. yeah. Was there any teacher that you can recall from junior high or high school who had an influence on you? Uh, well, I had my struggles with, with, with a lot of teachers. Uh, uh, in, in junior high school, I remember there was a Miss Fitzmar, so I was found to be a real pain in the neck. <laughs> but when I got to high school, there, there, there were, uh, I think, two teachers that, uh, uh, that did have an effect on, uh, on me. Uh, one of them was the uh, history teacher, Miss, uh, Mrs. Moser, and uh, she really made history very interesting to me. 
uh, and the other one was the bane of existence for a lot of the kids, but I, 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 I really thought she was a, sort of a pain in the neck too, but in the final analysis, she did a lot for me, and that was the English teacher, Miss Billingsley. Everybody thought she was a nut. And, but I have to tell you, she drummed into my head how to outline to present an argument. And I'm telling you, it is, it's 60 some odd years later, and when I sit down and to write a brief, mm -hmm. I remember what Ms. Billingsley told me mm -hmm. as to how to present my, my arguments and how to organize my, my thing. Yeah. So to this day, I remember that. Uh, and of course, there was the uh, being at, at, uh, in Hawthorne Street and having coming from a, a fairly orthodox family, a lot of the life did center around the, the, the synagogue as, as, mm -hmm. as well. You know, we used to, I used to go to the Jewish, hol to the Jewish holidays. Uh, my grandmother, my grandfather sort of schlepped me along for the for Shabbos, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I got, that's where I got to meet uh, uh, people who were not in my school even in the sixth grade, uh, like uh, Heshi Knopp, mm -hmm. uh, Leo Gold, uh, Murray Goldblum, mm -hmm. uh, Seymour Scher. These were all fellows that I yeah. got to know, you know, mm -hmm. through through the shul rather than through the school and even the Jewish Center, actually. Yeah. Did you find any overt anti-Semitism when you were in, you know, either in junior high or in high school? I, I found some, I, I found some in, uh, uh, in Elm Street School, mm -hmm. I must say. But actually, in, in Stanford High School, I, I, I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. In Stanford High School, I, I don't think I did. I, I, had a, I, got a, I got to tell you a funny story, because to this day, I, I, I can't believe it. It must have been about six or seven years ago at the Y, I was sitting in the, in the sauna with Alan Shainer. Oh, he's another fellow that I remember from school, Alan Shainer. Was contemporary. He lived in more on the east side, but we, we knew each other. And to me, Al Shannon was one of the toughest kids I know. Nobody messed with Alan Shannon. This guy was a tough guy. And we're sitting there, we're talking, and uh, he says, "You know, I started to talk. So I don't know how it came. We started to talk about." It. And he said, "You know," he said, "No." He said, "I want you to know." He said, "I always thought you were the toughest kid in Stanford." I said, me? I was afraid of my shadow. What are you talking about? He says, I think you were the toughest kid to stand because I always remember you walking around with that violin. And any kid that could walk around on Brook Street and Pacific Street and Hawthorne Street with a violin, that's a tough kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I just have an absolutely dumb violin. <laughs> uh, so, graduated high school and then. Where did you go to law school? Uh, well, I went to college first. I went to Brown University of Providence. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Yale Law School. Uh, and uh, then I came back. And uh, I married another Stanford native. I married mm -hmm. uh, well, Sari Frankel. And uh, she uh, was a member of the Frankel family, which is also quite active at Stanford. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell us about your involvement uh, with the uh, Orthodox congregation. You said you're still active and you had some stories to tell us about. Yeah, it, 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 I'll tell you what it is and it, it affected me. My, my whole family was very active in the uh, uh, synagogue. My father was on the board of directors. My uncle, Ben Engel, was on the board of directors one time. And I remember as a kid, uh, the big argument that took place, now this had to be, I would say, if I had to make a stab at the year, somewhere around 1947, something like that. But uh, the, there was a group in the, the show that felt that the uh, rabbi was too old-fashioned and they should get a new rabbi to come in because we have to attract 
uh, the younger people, the older numbers are dying and we have to attract the younger people. So there it was a rabbi, Teicher was the rabbi at that time. Mm -hmm. And then they brought down, uh, the other group brought down uh, some young, young fellow just getting out of Yeshiva University named Rabbi Aaron Kranz. Now the big argument took place with the board, do we follow, do, do we fire Rabbi Teicher to go hire the new rabbi? And, and I'll tell you to this day, I remember the, between the relatives and the, the members that we all knew, they, they, I couldn't believe what I, how violent <laughs> some of these people were getting. So that to this day, quite frankly, I thought I don't want to have anything to do with shul politics. I, said, I still remember that, that the bitter fight that went on. And my father was basically a, um, a Rabbi Teichel man. Mm -hmm. he, his point was, look, he's a married man, he's got children, it's not right to just throw the man out and get someone else. And, but the other people felt they were. Well, the, the, short, the long and short of it is, as you know, Rabbi, the Rabbi Aaron Kranz fans won. And uh, my father, you know, in time they became, became very, very close with Aaron Kranz. They became, you know, very good, very good friends when he finally came, came here. But the postscript to that story, how things go, is my father was on a vacation in, uh, in Montreal when he had his first heart attack. And lo and behold, Rabbi Teicher from Stanford walked in. He had gotten a congregation in Montreal and he heard my father was in the hospital. He knew he was one of his supporters and he came down to, <laughs> to, you know, to visit him. Yeah. Coincidence. So to this day, I stay out of show politics <laughs> ever since that. Yeah. So you're active in any other activities in Stanford? Any other? Well, not not much now. No, mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, on the planning board mm -hmm. for ten years, and I was chairman and uh, uh, for a year or so, and uh, that that was one night a week and. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell you, when I finally got off, I said, I'm not getting out of this chair at night again. <laughs> so, no, I really have uh, been remiss when it comes to that. Although in the past, I was uh, vice president of the uh, Jewish Center mm -hmm. when it was over here. Uh, I was president of B'nai Breath uh, for a while. Uh, and some other organizations, but I can't think of offhand. Uh, what year did you get married? 1955. Mm -hmm. And you said your wife was a Stanford native also? Yes, yes. Tell us her, a little about her family. Well, her, her grandfather was Hyman Frankel, uh, who founded the um, clothing store, H. Frankel and Sons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hyman Frankel had uh, three sons and a daughter. Uh, there was uh, Myron, uh, Harold, and, and Julian. Uh, my wife was uh, Harold's daughter, which was, he was the middle son. Uh, unfortunately, he was the first to pass away. Uh, and, um, Myron was the oldest son. His daughter was Cecile Rubin. Is Cecile Rubin is still mm -hmm. alive and was married to Jimmy Rubin. He had a, has another daughter who lives in Canada, and then uh, uh, Julian Frankel had the uh, Jay Frankel, who unfortunately passed away, and uh, his daughter Diane is still alive, and his his, his, his widow is still alive. Um, Sylvia. Sylvia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the daughter was uh, Ann Cherniak, married to Isidore Cherniak, who ran the, the old Morris Plan Bank. And I'm and sorry, whose daughter was that? That was Mrs. Cherniak. Yeah. Isidore Cherniak's wife. Mm -hmm. uh, was was the sister of the, of the boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a son by the name of Lewis, who was my age, and, and we became very friendly. 
and ultimately that's how I met my wife because they were neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, Lou Cherniak lived right next to uh, uh, the, the Harold Frankel on uh, Ocean Drive North, mm -hmm. and that's how I met my wife. Well, that's interesting. And uh, children you have? I have two children. I'm a very, very fortunate guy. I have two children, and I have five grandchildren, and they all live in Stanford. So that is I'm, unusual. I'm a very lucky, lucky guy. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, my son Harold wound up in my parents' house, the house they had, when they in Japan? passed away. No. That's my wife's parents. Oh. My, my parents wound up uh, at, living on Apple Tree Drive, which is not far from the shore. Yeah. And my son is uh, Shomer Shabbos, mm -hmm. and uh, so we made arrangements after my mother passed away. That uh, the, the house doesn't look the same anymore, but uh, it's actually the, the, the core of the house is my parents' house. Yeah. And uh, you had, your other child? Uh, my other child lives in, in North Stanford, uh -huh. and she has uh, two daughters, and uh, Harold has uh, uh, two daughters and a son, uh -huh. and I can't believe I have a 24-year-old grandchild. And uh, what is your daughter's name? Kathy. Uh -huh. And you're very fortunate to have them all living in Yeah, I really am. Uh, one, I go south for one and north for the other, so <laughs> it covers the water, water fire. I've been mm -hmm. very lucky. As I said, I, and I've always had my family here, and, I, and it was a close family. Even, even when the, the period of time that we, we lived in, in, in New York, uh, it was such a close family that almost every Sunday they drove from New York to Stanton. To this day, I still remember that horrible ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you didn't have the throughway and you didn't right. have the Merritt Parkway, you wound up going, I think, through the Bronx. <laughs> mm -hmm. Through the Bronx and eventually we got to Brooklyn. And uh, So I was very happy when I finally arrived back in Stanford. Being your only child, do you think that had a bearing on being such a close family, knit family? Did it ever occur to you that uh, you were without siblings and you missed it? Or? Well, no, no, I'll tell you why. It, it was, it was a, a, an interesting family. I, I really felt it in a sense that I, I almost I had three mothers. I mean, I had mine, uh, my Aunt Rose Engel, because she lived here, you know, I'd come up here summers, and uh, then we had a, another a sister that never left, did live in New York and never left New York. And I used to go visit there and go around, but I, it, it, the sisters were very close, and the cousins were very close, because uh, uh, my mother and my uh, two aunts were very close with the, with the major ladies. There was Betty Bragan, uh, there was uh, Frances uh, Brenner, and they were, you know, very close. And I mean, even with Ben, Ben, who was the boy, and my, my two uncles were, were were, you know, close to them as yeah. well. So, we, uh, particularly living across the street the way we did, growing up kind of together, it was, it was, it was, it was yeah. It was You're a very family. fortunate to uh, have a, a family that oh, yeah. lived close I, I never, together. And... I, never, I never felt alone, yeah. uh, because it, it's, it's interesting, uh, and I, uh, there's a picture we have where um, Judy Bragan and Andy Brennan and I, we, we sort of, we were always in the same, Mm -hmm. Sandbox together. Yeah. There's a picture of the three of us in the sandbox, you know? And it's, it's that kind of thing. Are there any other important events in your life that uh, you might want to tell us about? Boy, I, I need no more prime than that. I just, I just you know, I, I can't uh, think offhand. Um, Any important law cases? Do you really want to hear about that? <laughs> and, uh, my wife said she's sick of those stories. <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I, oh yes, I have to tell you another story. Yes. 
in a sense, it's, 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 I went to my 50th high school reunion and uh, I met there uh, Mary L. Gallagher, who was uh, one of the daughters from the Gallagher funeral home. Mm -hmm. And we were in the same class in high school. And I have to say, when I bumped into her there, I, I said, you know, Mary, you remind me of something. Fifty years ago, we were both Lightniks. I was coming from Hawthorne Street, and she was coming from Suburban Avenue, and somehow or other, we always met at the Forest Street, at the bottom of Prospect Street, and coming walk, walking up to the Stanford High School together. And I said, you just made me realize, here we are 50 years ago, we were walking up and down Prospect Street, and now it's 50 years later, and I want you to know I'm still walking up and down Prospect Street. Because <laughs> 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 that's where our real door is Prospect Street, you know? So I said, I don't know whether that's progress or not. Well, you've been in Stanford all your life virtually, and looking back and looking at where we are now, do you think that we're in a better community now than we were when you were growing up. Do you have any thoughts about that? Yes, I I do. I do. And I, I, there's some interesting things that I thought have, have, have transpired. Uh, when I was a kid, you had uh, Pacific Street. Mm -hmm. And in Pacific Street, you had I think three kosher, kosher butcher stores. You had two delicatessens. I remember there was Max Myers and... Uh, Carpels. <laughs> what was that? Carpels. No, it wasn't Carpels. Weinstein's. Weinstein's. That's what so I remember. So there were three. Okay, there was, no, I don't remember that one. And then you had the, 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 the uh, uh, newspaper store where I had to walk from Hawthorne Street to go get the, the four of it's for my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, the, uh, a, a kosher restaurant. You had Bloomfield's Delicatessen that you could go eat there. And there was uh, a couple of people also cooked out of their houses. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Falk did some cooking out of her right, house for people. Prushansky. And Mrs. Prushansky did some cooking out of the house. And, and so you had all that, and today I look around, and I'm, you know, in a sense resentful. I have to go to New Rochelle to take my son out, or New York to take my son out, in order to find a, a restaurant to eat at. And uh, uh, I don't think we don't even have a kosher butcher store in town, although the supermarkets do, do, do sell, sell that. But the fascinating thing that gets me is, while that has gone off in one end to be what you would call a, a less of a Jewish community, when I was a kid, I remember we used to say there was Mr. Chowski was in the show, Mr. Burns, and some of these old, old fellas that were the guys that got up and read the Torah and, and did all these things. Uh, and we all used to wonder, what's going to happen when Mr. Chowski passes away? And what's going to happen when old man so-and-so passes away and so-and-so? And the truth of the matter is, and that's maybe the way the circle goes, not one of my Jewish friends at the synagogue, not one, including me, <laughs> remained Shabbos Shabbos or in any way became other than what you would call a, a cultural Jew. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they have their feelings, they're sorry, I'm not, but, it, but not the orthodox end of it. And yet today, when you go to the synagogue, I'm amazed at the young people, the 13-year-old the, the kids that can read from the Torah, how, how it's proliferated. They have no trouble finding on a Saturday somebody to go get up there and read the Torah and, and do what they have to do. So in, in some respects, you see it going more to the more to the to the right in, in the sense the people are there, but yet in the outside community there's, there's there's less in Stanford it seems to me by way of services than what we had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I think uh, 
We talked about your education and going to law school, but you didn't tell us much about uh, being at Brown or at Yale. Oh, those were great years. Mm -hmm. Brown, I had a, that, that opened up a whole new world to me, really did. In what, in what manner? Uh, well, in, in seeing things I guess I'd never, never seen before, you know, uh, uh, doing things that I'd never done before. I became interested in art. I didn't even know about art, you know, mm -hmm. it's just some other, it, uh, and the people I met there, it, uh, it just opened my eyes to a lot of things. Uh, more so in a sense that, yeah, when you got to Yale Law School, that was, you know, you're down to work. <laughs> you're going to law school. That, 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 you, you're trying to learn the law. It wasn't the, the whole experience the way that you had when you went off to college. You still friendly with any of the people that you met in college? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'm quite friendly with the, with the people I met in college. More so than even in law school. For some mm -hmm. Peculiarly enough, yeah. I go to all the reunions and I, I do enjoy them. It's a very nice Jewish community, Providence, by the way. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the tuition was when you went to college? <laughs> the first semester that I went, went to Brown, uh, they told me that uh, they didn't have room for me on the campus. Uh, because uh, they hadn't done enough building after the war to do it. So uh, I had to go up and find my own room. Uh, I went up, went looking for a room, and I found uh, a, a room about a mile away from the campus where uh, they gave me a list of houses to go to where you could sleep. So. Uh, I went upstairs to that house and the woman showed me, this bed is taken already, if you'd like you can have that bed. Mm -hmm. And that was God, I think it was like five dollars a week. Mm -hmm. I think it was five dollars a week. So because of that, I I that I didn't meet on the campus because I didn't have to. So I didn't have the room, I didn't have the board. That was separate, that was paid separately. My lunches for, for, for a sandwich was like, like a quarter. <laughs> but I paid in tuition for the first semester $390. <laughs> now it went up pretty, pretty fast after that. <laughs> but I actually wrote, I to this day, I remember I had to make sure I had the money in the account. I sat down and I wrote our check for three hundred ninety dollars. In law school, that got to be more. I, I you know, it, it's interesting. I guess I got a million to writing checks. I don't remember what that was, but that first three hundred ninety dollar yeah. check, I'll never forget. Yeah. Well, it's really been a pleasure talking to you. Sam. I don't know if it's informative or it's informative and it brought back memories to me because most of the People you mentioned from Stanford, I was also friendly with, uh, and uh, I think it's been great growing up in Stanford. I do too. Yeah. I do too. I yeah. think it's a it's a wonderful city. It has a, a lot to offer. Uh, you have uh, several communities here that are living all together, uh, and I, I think by and large, uh, I found it a wonderful community to live in. And it, it, being close to New York, it has its advantages. You can go to for all the cultural things. You know, there's, there's nothing finer than the Metropolitan Museum. Uh, there's no opera orchestra greater than the Metropolitan, the Opera Metropolitan, New York Film. I mean, it, it's, it's it's next door. You know, yeah. it's easy easy going in, and you can have the more of a feeling of a, of a community more so than even in New York, in a sense. You know, I remember. One of the things, and I even wrote an essay on it once. New York, the great cosmopolitan era. Well, my father's store was in Borough Park. 99% Jews. They come to Stanford, there's a mix. Mm -hmm. Which is more cosmopolitan? Tell me. 
That's why we like Stanford. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Did I get too much? Of, oh, oh, what do you want to do with we that? We want yeah. to uh, take a picture of it and put yeah, it on the Yeah, I think that's uh, it, uh, the other interesting thing, uh, you know, about that is that I never, nobody ever told me they ever called my grandfather Herman. <laughs> I don't know where that name come from. He was Chaim. Right. <laughs> so are you working full time? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I keep at it. So you you don't have a target for a retirement date then? No, not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> no, it's going to be a forced retirement. It's nice to come place to hang your hat and yeah. do all of that. All right, Sam. Uh, I hope I didn't go on too long. No, no, no. You're, you're perfect. And uh, in a short period of time, you'll get a copy of the DVD, which I'll deliver to you. And then you can uh, view it with Sari. And then, okay. And then we'd like to interview Sari as well. All right, I'll tell her that. She's...